Okay, so I think we're all on now. Let's yes. welcome my name's Stuart. And today, Friday's masterclass is going to be focusing on pre form corners and also how to form the perfect corner as well. There's a couple of suggestions that we had through from emails. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be focusing on them such on the subjects that you, you sent through last week on the last Friday's session as well. So today what we're going to do is I've got a couple of little scenarios. We're going to got a lantern detail. Then we're going to show you a preformed corner. And then we're going to show you a nice little four bear with the detail as well that we want to trim around that. To start off with the, the preformed corner, now we're going to be manufactured over 30 different trims. So we cover most aspects and they can all be found in our product guides and whatever have you on them. But most of the trims are all focused on that. Now the preformed corners are designed for ease of application. Now when you come to any corner detail, whether it be an upstand or a button wall, then you need to make sure that there's an expansion gap is left as well. And we're looking for a 25 mil expansion gap between any button wall or fixed structure. And the reason for that is that deck is going to expand and contract, and our trim will bridge that void, and it will allow for that expansion and contraction. So going to your preform corners, what we've got here is the, the C3 in external, and then we've got your C3 internal. So if you want to fall around that hands and upstand, then the corners work well in this scenario. Now the corners are hand molded, so it is important that we just give them a rub up and just lightly abrade that surface. Let's give it a little key up, nothing special, just a little key up just to get the bottom to that nice shiny finish. Now fixing your trims, all we're going to use is just standard cloth nails, galvanized cloth nails, and we're just going to make sure we push the tight up and fix that through into the corner. I've already pre fixed the C1 corner and the C3 external and internal. Now joining your trims, now the first trim. We're going to use it on the D260. Now the D260 is for any upstands, and what this does is it allows for expansion and contraction. What you see on the trim is it's set slightly over 90. So when we push it up to the area we're going to bond to, you've still got the expansion and contraction as well. So we need to make sure we really fix down to that deck side. Now to cut your trims, it's a lot easier to do with either tin stick or gill boards. Or if you've got a grinder, even better. But it can be done easy enough with efficient tensioners. Now, wherever you put your corners, we need to make sure we overlap at least 50 mil on touching. And that's the same situation on any of the trims, overlap a minimum of 50 mil. To get your 50 mil marking, and all we're going to do is just mark the trim where we need to cut, so like to the end of the baton, where all your buttons are fitted, that gives you your outside perimeter line. Everything can be worked in. With your chin stitch, nice and straightforward. All we're going to do is just cut that line, and you can see how easy you do cut with a chin stitch. But as I say, if you have got a grinder, it's going to be a lot easier to tell. So as your trim is cut, wherever trim meets trim, we're going to apply our trim adhesive. So on every joint, every corner, we cure the trim adhesive. And it's a polyurethane based tin adhesive, and all we need to do is just put one continuous bead up that trim, like so, and then apply the trim in place where it needs to be. Once it's secured in place, then I'm going to fix the trim down. You'll see I'm fixing to the base, and the reason for it is if you do a bead fans in over, then corners further on. Now you fix in, you want to make sure that roughly about every 150 mil spacings, but the key is you want to make sure that trim is flat to the deck. So move it up slightly. Same situation on your car when we reach your external and internal. Where you've got your 50 mil overlap, and then going to apply trim adhesive to that car again. So overlapping both trims. Place the trim in place, securing it to that preform corner, and then we can fix it down. So as I say, preform corner makes it a lot easier 
the farm in and out. And all we'll do later on in the preparation of family shape, family draw, and chunks to get a nice serious finish. So that's one way of doing it. If you want to purchase the premium varnish, if not, I'll just show you now how to form you put your varnish yourself over this other side. So when have we got a 45 degree? Let's see, place your trim up and push it up against that trim, up against that up, a butting wall. And all we need to do is just mark along that baseline where it fits. So then again, on the other side, we're just going to mark it along. And what you find is we bisect that angle then, so we know exactly that angle that we need to cut off. Off of the trim back up, making sure you've got 50 mil overlap on the next trim, and then you can mark off the point and down the back of that wall. So what you'll have is a back point, and then you have a point to work to. What we're going to work to is this first corner, and then we're going to take that 45 degree angle through. With your tin steps from the back side, just cut down that wall so it doesn't fly past the wall area up to that first corner. And then what we're going to do is you can either get a straight head or just offer it in. And the good thing about the trims is you don't need to be so precise when you're cutting it. The banders will fill that trim. Obviously, the neater you cut your trims, the better finish you will get. But it is just marking from point to point at this stage. That and then we can offer that in place where it needs to go. And again, we're going to roll up the trim on this edge. So, got it trim adhesive, there aren't any overlap. And then we're going to just fix that in place using it. Now, first of all, I tend to just finish it up to your line here. Just make sure your points all marry up. And then I will just put a temporary point back in for the time being. So if you do need to do any adjustments, it's easy enough to pop it off as you go. But making sure you push up to that next trim. I'm going to be nailing trims, especially on a three meter run as the trim's coming. It's a lot easier to start one end, do the other end, and then come in the middle. If you were to start one end and start working your way up, that two can sit slightly on. So it is important you just work the four pens, push your middle in, and then we're out here at that point now. Get your next trim. Now, will you make that up to an internal corner? What we're going to do with this detail is we're going to scribe it. So the first one, I can literally sit it up to that wall. So same as you did before, offer it up in place. And you've already got your point. If you're marking, so where that trim finished there, we're then going to just mark it through and obviously up that back wall as we did previously on the other trim. So, what we've got your marking, send it through, and then we're going to pop it in straight edge off here. You can go slightly under the marking if you want. Just sit again to that first corner point and then up again from that point you marked earlier. And also what you should be left with is a nice 45 degree cut there. And this is just in case you want to form it yourself instead of using the preform forms. I'm happy with that now. I'm going to keep it pushed up. I mentioned earlier before about pushing your trim to the wall, and you can see it a little bit better for this camera actually. Is if we just left it to that top point, you'll end up with this gap in the corner earlier. So you need to make sure to push it flush to that upstand and then fix it down. As you go. Starting again, the same rule applies. Fix one end. Fix the other end. And then one in the middle. The spacings in general are going to be under, under and fixed again. As you go. As I said earlier on, the key is making sure that the trim is nice and warm. So that's your, your external mighty cover. Now for the scribe, especially your heat trim, we're going to offer that up. Again, what we need to do is we need to get this point up to there. So, all we're going to do is from this corner point, we're going to then put another 45 degree angle. 
I said again, I just get this in. It doesn't have to be really precise to the mill or whatever. If you're going to band the draw that further down the line, you're just getting the trim. All right, you trim, you come back with your tin snips. Great job for that first corner detail there. And then we'll offer that in place. And then you should have a nice little scribe over the top of that. So we end fixing wise, using the galvanized pop nail. Really straightforward, push it up to that point, make sure you plug, and then fix it down to the deck. So that's your detrim all around, and you can see how easy it is really if you want to form your own, put your own, and you've also got the other option then of free form corners. So on the top, so if we're going to be doing either a lantern or a skylight, which is becoming more and more popular at the moment, what we'll use with this is our AT195 external trim. Now, this chain will overlap the D chain and you can form that nice upstanding on. The lantern will sit on top of it. You're not going to get any driving rain, you're covering it through, and this chain works really well on that. Now, I've got an internal light on that, so what I'm going to do is just cut it by hand, and we're just going to cut that using your square, you just mark the 45 degree light source. From that point around that radius, then the open, and we're just going to cut that. With a tin snip. So it's just a case of marking these two sides. And you have got your golden points at the moment as you can mark them and then you put them through with the tin snip. So it is straightforward enough. Same scenario again, so we're two meters in. We're going to offer that in place and we're going to make sure we put some adhesive over that joint. So just a full continuum feed. So across the trim, nice full bead, and then apply that to where it needs to go. Now, when you're fixing this, you really need to fix the trim down to one edge, and after you fix it along the top where your lantern is going to be sat, you fix that down as you go, then you've got that nice fully sealable bottom of the Bring it through. Again, we're going to put around all situations for the corner. Now, with the trim, there's two different sides. You've got a 90 and a 75. So you can swap it and change it which way suits the step detail for you. So it is universal on both edges. But whatever one you start, you want to keep it the same. So your trim line all lined up. Now with this, I'm going to mark it through. So we're going to put another 45 degrees in that corner. So mark it through. The long corner is 45. And then send it through like so. It's just a case of marking each trim on the trim. Now, I've got grinder, I'll show you an easy way to rip your grinder. Best way you put down externals. Or if you can Pop that in place, and then you want to make sure it's been flush to this edge. Now, I'm overhanging a little bit here. I won't want to send it through. If you send it past too much, the trim is going to fall So I need to make sure I'm slightly just under or thereabouts with that point. So just mark that edge off. You need to cut them all to the side. Like so. And then I'll offer that in place. Now the front edge, and I'll just show you how to do this external corner. But what I prefer to do is if you have got access to a grinder, because it's a length, if you want to make sure you mark from length to length again, what you can do with your grinder is just cut through the two. That way then discard your edges, and then you just nail them down to suit as well. But with this point, I've no grinder, so I'm just going to show just mark your bottom edges, and then I'll just put them points in. So let's say mark. The back of one, so I've got my back marking, my front marking, and then I can move them through. Then again, just a 45 degree, send it through to that corner. I'll do the same at this point. So from each corner straight through, 
and then a triple left with the length of 45 degree corner like so. As I said before, the easier way is you can grind it down, put your grind on the two and put it that way. But I'm going to tap this in place for now. We're going to put these two on the two adhesive. Put the two adhesive on. And also along this edge as well. You can put it two adhesive on. And then I can fix it down to the dead. Now I prefer to start at the corner. That's the point you're going to be working from. Fix it down. Using your clamp nails. As I said earlier, you don't need to be really precise. So nail that down, make sure you hook it up. Like so, all the way around. And that just gives you that nice little look. And you've some detail to sit on. And then we'll bandage over these joints here. Further on down the preparation stage. So moving on, I'll just show you the corner. So how to do a three-form corner. So if you have got a C1 corner, you want to use that instead of making your own, which I'll show you in a minute. The easiest way is obviously with this point here, the preform corners come out of being made and they don't have any drip edges on them. That's not so bad where you've got your gutter line, but on your raised edge side where there's no gutter. And we need to make sure we set that dip edge all the way through so it looks a little bit neater. On the back edge, we need to make sure we scribe it in on that D. So we're going to leave this point on at the back, this little foot edge, and then we're just going to cut a 45 degree angle from this point here. Using your tin snips, send that cut through. And what you should be left with is a nice little scribe detail on that back. When you come to your front, turn the end that drip edge runs all the way through. And then we're just going to come from this corner point here. We're just going to put a nice 45 degree over the top, and then that'll just look over the top of that C100 tray. So we're just cutting it through. And what we should have then is a nice piece that runs over the top. You've got your zip edge that will run right through to the underside here, and you've got a nice scribe detail on that. Same again with trim, trim. You need to put the trim adhesive on. So good continuous feed. And along that button as well. We need to make sure wherever the front edge is, you don't want to be seeing any unsightly fixings. So the trim adhesive will form that trim through that button. Give it a good rubbing place. And then the trim adhesive stops that uplift of wind, like so. So you need to make sure we fix that down to the deck. Once that trim adhesive sticks and bonds, that will secure that trim on that front deck. Without any so fix it down as we did before. Keep it to the button. And I'm going to keep one button on the beating. Where you've got your drip edge, then it does require two buttons and you'll see the second one is stepped down slightly and the reason for that is it just sends the trim off enough because you need to get the butter bracket under here as well if you're not so bad on the drip head you don't need any butter so you can keep it plus that nice face detail but on the front we need to make sure we get butter bracket get it into two things and the one step down just to allow for that curve of the trim so you can kick the trim off along that way same again over that 50 bin Got it trim adhesive to the front and on the bottom. I know it's only a small piece, but you can kind of get the idea of how that corner is formed. And that's simply then just nail down and go to the deck. So that's your pre formed corner done. I'll take you over and I'll show you the corner yourself now. So if you want to use the C1 corners, that's fine. This way, I'll just show you how to do your own corner and form your own corner. Start the end of the, the beach in. We've got the one button, as I mentioned earlier on, and we're going to strive it along that back the same again. So keep that straight up and then just take the 45 degrees from that point. Using your snips, cut that angle off. And you want to make sure it's pretty up tight and we don't come past. This button in any way, that's your finish point, that's the point you need to work to. 
So that's your beetroot going up the side. Now you're eating. The air trim, okay, so we've got the two buttons on, and then we'll take that through. Now, with your air, you want to make sure, same again, we work from that corner, and then we're going to put the trim adhesive on. So, we'll take, put it to size, trim adhesive on, and then secure that trim in place on that trim adhesive. Now, with your corners, the best bet is to start at your corner, make sure that corner is nice. And that's a nice and vertical on that front edge. So that's where your customer will see. That's the point you need to make sure it's nice and flush. Then we open your corner of your back. Fix that down. Nice and flush. And then we'll go back to our patient. Now we're going to put it to length. So your stride's done. And then what you've got then is you've got two different drip heights. And in order to overcome that, we just mark the underside of the drip height. And I'll also mark on the top of this corner as well. So, what we'll do is we've got trim on trim. And to make a nice neater thing, we're going to make that push in, we're going to put that little section of the trim out so that trim sits nice and flush. And if we keep that drip edge on, so that point where we've marked, so then we're going to come from the 45 degree up to that point. And we're just going to make sure we cut. That angle out for you, you can see the with that nice 45 degree cut. Same again underneath, but just mainly undercut it. Just a nice little corner cut. And then what you should have then is that trim out the same. Same again, cut that parcel out. So that nice little square edge, and that'll sit the trim nice and flush. And then you're left with that nice finished detail there. So the trim sits flush, and then we'll work that in. What's your trim adhesive? So a nice full continuous bead. And then just smudge that in up to the point, making sure it's nice and flush to that pattern. And same again, making sure that corner's nice. If you don't want to push it too far, and we'll kick that bottom out, we need to make sure we just keep it. Nice and straight, nice and flush before we push it down. And then just tend to squeeze that point, keep your thumb on it, keep it flush with the bottom. Start the corner and work your way through. So fix it up. That's, That's how you form your own corner. So it is straightforward enough, it's quite easy to do and work with it. I'm just going to show you now a bit, which is a question we did get asked as well on how to form a bow bay or a segmented bay, whatever bay you've got there, that radius, we need to make sure we get the trim round. And to do this, what we need to do is, and I've already pre done it for you, so you can see, is we've cut a section of these out, and also a section of these out from the other side of the drip head. You don't have to use your drip head on it, you can use the 8195 external trim, they're not the drip, because you're not going to have any gutter line and they're not unless it's pre-made gutter and etc. So what we tend to do with this stick is just mark out 100 mil sections. So roughly 100 mil little segment that we're going to then cut them earlier to be keep the few square. We're just going to transfer the lines down to that front edge. Like so and we also need to then transfer the lines through to that underside trip edge as well. We need to cut that earlier in order for that trim to bend and so transfer your mark through. With your steps, we're going to put little V sections out. So we're going to send it through right up to the edge of the trim and then just cut that little V out as you go along the little mill markings. Now, if it is more of a bigger radius than what we've got, then you may have to reduce them and cuttings down slightly or if it's not as as bad a radius then obviously just extend the cut out a little bit more. So you've got to make the cut out to suit the actual bend. Then again, cut that out from the other side, nice little V's. Like so. You can get them all cut to size. And now this is cut, this will allow that trim 
to bend in shape. You can see how flexible it is. Like so, we're going to fit it on. So we'll pop it in place. We'll know it fits the size. Full continuum feed, which is important. But we don't want any blobs. If you put blobs, it's only fixed in certain areas. So you need to make sure it's fixed the full entire length of that feed. All the way through. Pop your chin in place. You can see how easy that will shape the form of the ball. Press it in place, fix it down. Back again, start the third point. And then press that middle in to suit. And you continue on then fixing it down. To form that board. So you can see how well flexible the fins are and how you can shape them to make any detail you want. What I'll do is I'll just dress you in the corner. So I'll show you the pre formed corner here now. Band these out for you, matting that up for you. And it is a case of, of matting and bandies. So when you're banded, a little bit of banding, what we need to do is obviously just cut them to size. So on your three fold corners, you need to just make sure we band it over them point, any bit of corner detail. And even on this little edge detail, you can just want to form it. So I'll show you the corners and then I'll do a form of corner here as well. And you can see that the trim is flapping down slightly. So it does, until that trim adhesive does go off. The easiest way to hold that in place is by a little bit of masking tape and that will just keep that corner flush to just hold it in place for you and then I like to just trim that off like so with my knife and not covering all that full area. When you've got everything ready to size, then you go and get the my resin. You get the resin, and then I'll add my arbor to suit the resin. Now, it has been quite warm the last couple of days, so it is important to use that as a summer hardener. Or all, even better still, if you've got the extra slow, that'll just buy you a little bit more working time. Especially the conditions we've been out, we're looking at this hot column and the amount of volume in your bucket as well. So working across. I've got roughly on the volume gauge of the bucket just over one square metre. So, then one, two, three informations on the bucket are based on square metres. So, we go across to the bucket, whatever temperature range, especially with it being hot today, safety dispenser, tell me I need 20 ml of hardening, and then just apply that in, give it a good mix. So, then we have the mixing stick, give it a good mix in. And so, making sure you mix in up about 60 seconds or so, getting it all full in with the matting, etc. Now, with your roller, you can use your 6 inch roller, sorry, your 3 inch roller, any of the detail work. Now, the best bet with these is to soak them out on the job. What we don't want to do really is slapping resin up here, especially on these edges, it's just going to drip all over the customer's floor. So, just make sure you give them a good soak up on the deck. Or on an octopus board is a lot better just to save any excess. And I'm actually pick them up and then we'll pop them where they want to go over them joints, etc. And the key is to soak them up and then get them in, in place in situ. That way, then it breaks the matting on the band, it breaks all the binder down, and then we can apply it over, especially on any of them joints on you. Pre formed corners. Well, the key is with any of the matting and banding work, as I mentioned last week, is to let it soak in. You need to make sure it soaks in. Now, on this corner, if you have a look at this corner, you're going to show up you now. Just to form your own corner, you need to put yourself a very good matting, rub it off under binding 50 mm square. You don't want to be using the bandage, the bandage you have to put several layers on. Uh, so, just basically just soak it up, get your resin. Over that square piece, and then we'll apply that on 
as you go, fitting it down, keeping it close to the bottom. Now with the corner, some people fold it over, whatever she can go right or wrong way. First, you have to first to turn that edge, and I'll just hold it in place and then while it breaks the binding down. The key is then soaking and it makes it more flexible, more easier to work with. If you do as many patterns we've got all the different ones, I'll show you just on this area here, especially if you're going to use wherever them joints are on your on your bare window, you need to just cover over any of them little squares. Put yourself a little bit of square, and we're just going to cover over and cut out we did along the way, and then we're going to band these over the top. Of that. So you get a bit of understanding how the bandage works. Next tool you need is your brush. Just your little, little brush. What you need to do is just get a little bit of resin onto your brush and you'll see how easy now it's given time to soak in, how easy we can shape and form those mats. And then what we're doing is just dabbing away there. So we just dab away at that corner Dressing it out and feathering it out as you go, just to get a nice neat and finish. You can see how easy that applies over any detail. Let's see if that was using felt or rubber. You'd have little joins on joints. So with the GRP, this is where it comes into it, so especially on the lanterns, etc. Things you can form it, shape it, over any area you need to do. And it's as simple as that. The key is, as I said, let it break down. Let it soak up on your corner. You'll be focusing on the corner. Now, this is an area which, for me, this is what your customers see. This is where you want to spend a bit of time on the corner. The easiest way to do this is to start at the top and I like to bed your top on. That way, then you get a nice solid base to work on. And we're just dabbing. We don't want to be brushing, you're just lifting the fibers up. So, just dab away. And it's a brush with you. Dab it in, and wherever you use the brush, you don't need to use your power roller. This does exactly the same job. Just dab away at the top, and then coming down the middle of the, of the trim at the front. And then what you want to do is drag it and work it away from the corner. And by doing that, you can tension that sharp edge up like so. So just dab away as you go, removing any bubbles, any air in there, and just feather it out. Along that way as well. It's easy enough to, to shape and mold, especially if you give it time to break down. The next tool we're going to use now is the uh, next material is the tissue. This is a finishing tissue. Now, so this is better used, especially on your corners. Now, once your corner's wet, what we're going to do is just apply the tissue over that edge. Now, this is a lot finer grade. And what this does then is it removes all the fibers, you get a nice overall finish of that corner and just makes it a nice and neat and finish. So the same again is what your customers see. But work away from your corner, it's the same scenario as we just did before with the matting. Work away from that corner with your roller and you don't need to saturate your roller, it's just a nice amount of on your roller. And you can work it in. So get it all bedded into the top and around that front. Then I just tend to just turn that tissue off and then just working it in you can pull it sharpen it up nice and easy feather it in and that will give you a nice finish for that corner that'll be cured within about 30 to 40 minutes then you can give it a light sand up and it will only be minimal sanding especially with the with the tissue on and you just make sure a nice need to finish overall that's it. I think I've covered more scenarios. I think, like you said, the, the key to as well, some of your things with your trims is trims coming three meter length. And to join your trims, as I mentioned earlier on, if this is a three meter length, then all we need to do is put two of these two on, overlap them with 50 mil, and then you continue on on a larger scale with your roof as well. Then bandage over them joints. That's one way of doing it. The other way, which I tend to prefer, is by using. A little plate place, which cut yourself up about 100, 150 mil. Two adhesive on one side, the other side, overlap it, and then two adhesive on that side, and that way then 
It'll give you a nice foot finish as opposed to a step finish on that. So that makes you trim it out a little bit better on the internet. But as I say, it's all down to time and just spending time working stuff in, dressing it, overlapping the trims, and using the finishing tissue makes for a nice and neater overall appearance of the room. Once it's done, top coating is standard, and then that's job done. <laughs>